Welcome. We're glad to be coming to you today to give you another devotional and hopefully encourage you. We've learned that we were going to have another month of the social distancing. This SD is not the SD that I think about, though. I think about another month of spiritual development. I know that some of the parents are at home and they're homeschooling their kids, trying to be teacher and principal. That's not what you had planned, but especially for the rest of this school year. So try to make the best of it and join us daily for these devotionals, and we'll try to encourage you as much as we can. Recently, because of so many businesses having to work from home and people, employees working from home, they're doing a lot of video conferencing. The application Zoom has a video conferencing app that uh, is very helpful, but they also have included for managers and business owners a part of theirs that's called the Attendee Attention Tracking. So if someone's participating in a conference call or conference uh, Zoom video conference, they may be distracted. And if they're trying to multitask or do other things, then this app calls them out. It highlights it so that the manager or owner can see that they're not giving their full attention. We're trying to look into seeing if later we can have some sort of an app that will track the attention of worshipers during the sermon, but we haven't found one yet. As I think about what we're dealing with, certainly our attention has been called into focus on this virus and the health concern that we have in public safety for everyone. When we hit the pause button and we have an occasion, sometimes people look at prayer as being a spiritual crisis management. I hope that your prayer life is not based on just a crisis, but that you view it as a part of your relationship, your daily conversation with God. God cares so much for us. He loves us. And so the scriptures encourage us to pray often. As Solomon was dedicating the temple, there was this message from God in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, beginning in verse 12. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locust to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Did you know that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16, Paul says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? So the place in which God now hears prayer comes from the heart of the sincere Christian, the person who has committed their life and yielded it to God, casting all our care upon him because he cares for you, as David said in Psalm 55 and verse 22. In Psalm 61, verses 1 and 2, listen to how David calls this act of prayer. He says, Hear, hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. What a beautiful thought that whenever we are overwhelmed, whenever life just seems to kind of push in or overflow, when we feel overwhelmed, we can go to the rock that is higher than anything else, God. The power of prayer is found in posture. That is, when we yield ourselves, when we submit ourselves, when we bend ourselves. One of the words that's used in Scripture in the Old and New Testament for worship is the idea of to kiss the ground before. When we kneel, when we kneel before God, He recognizes, He hears the sincerity and the humility of our prayer. In Psalm 95 and verse 6, the psalmist said, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. That posture of absolute recognition, reverence before God, 
is what is important in prayer. Sometimes we worry about whether or not our prayer will be heard. God has assured us, promised, that he hears our prayer. In Psalm 145 and verse 14, the Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. When we bow before our maker, he hears our prayer, he answers our prayer, and he can give us those things that we need. That posture of kneeling is adoration, adoration in our hearts. We adore God for all that he is. Jesus taught the disciples to pray, our Father who art in heaven. As we think about God and how high he is, how holy he is, then we certainly reverence, adore God before us. We bow before kings. Have you ever noticed that when men propose to their, their wives, they get on their knees? That posture is one of adoration. That posture is one of sincerity. That posture is one of love and devotion. Our reverence should be to God because Jesus went on to say, hallowed be your name. We hallow our God by kneeling before him. Recently, I learned that parakeets, they sleep while they're sitting on their perch. And we wonder, well, why don't they just fall off? Well, something about the way God created many species of birds is that when their knees are bent, when their legs are bent, their claws hold on very firmly. They grasp, they clutch, they will not let go. Think about that. When we bow our knees before God, it not only brings us into a right posture before God, but it also attaches us. When we bend the knee, we clutch more closely to our God. May you cling to God through all that we face during this time of social distancing. Until tomorrow, may God bless you. See you then.